Okay, we're live and uh, hey, Facebook, happy Sunday. And um, also thank, thanks everybody for, you know, wishing me, you know, condolences and all that for uh, my boy Martino. That was really nice for everybody to do. It's kind of like I woke up to that, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, but yeah, just uh, here we are. We're going to talk with my friend Anya. And then Anya, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us where you're at and um, what you do. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just yeah, give us a, well, give us a quick intro. I'm sorry that you had that happen. I know that it's not easy to have them pass, but um, so I'm Anya, I'm from Connecticut, I'm in Fairfield, Connecticut, um, and I run a, um, a business called Well-Mannered Met and a rescue called Pit Stop New York. So um, I have uh, a bunch of dogs here from different rescues uh, that are here getting ready for adoption and then a couple of um, boarding dogs and a couple of fosters. So it's a, it's a handful. Nice. And then like your, your rescue is ice. Is mainly is it mainly bullies or is it just like yeah, is it that's primarily uh, pity types? Um, I just kind of I don't know. I just kind of fell into them. I um, started volunteering at a shelter a while ago, and that was kind of just all they had. And I didn't really know much about the pitbulls in general, but uh, I just started getting into them, and then realized that, that was sort of a need that wasn't wasn't met in my community. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, what kind of gave you what? what kind of motivated you to do the rescue for bullies just because um um honestly i really wanted to do it in a way that people could get like good dogs um i you know worked at a lot uh, a lot of shelters in the area and um you know i think it's hard for people with families and that sort of thing to to be able to adopt a dog sometimes because they just don't know enough about the dog for it to be safe mm -hmm. so um our our primary focus was to to focus on you know, good adoptable dogs that were, um, you know, safe in the community. So we pulled a lot from um, ACC in New York and Bridgeport and Stanford. And uh, we did a couple of um, dog fighting dogs from some bus that I helped with and the, at the ASPCA as well. So that was oh, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, maybe. We'll, yeah, I want to talk about yeah. the fighting, the fighting yeah. dogs. Because I think that'll be a good, an interesting topic. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, uh, I mean, for this whole Facebook Live, uh, Anya and I want to talk about just like um, just what's to be expected when you have a bully breed or if you're going to rescue one, you know, just some things you should have or have available when you get when you try to adopt a a, pit, a pity, a bulldog, bully. I mean, bully breed can go from I mean, like from bulldog, American bulldog. Pitbull Terrier or Staffordshire, I mean, just in general. So, yeah, and I, I think mean, that's part, of, part of the problem is there's so many different types of dogs out there that are being labeled, you know, A as pitbulls, but B, uh, there are different types of even pitbulls in the community. You know, there are those that are kind of like the the really low stocky ones, and then there are ones that are 100 pounds and, and super tall and lanky. Like, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to call all of those the same breed, even. Um, not ridiculous, but it just doesn't really make sense sometimes. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's hard because you get like boxer lab mix and then they look pit bull and then they get like, um, yeah, I mean, the poor, I mean, I feel bad for the stocky ones just because they literally have no legs and it's no. just, uh, and they get out all the arthritis and the little like frog dogs that are just, they're not, they're not genetically well bred at all, but, um, yeah, people go for, I know. And they look, I mean, they're okay. I mean, I don't. I'm not attracted to like the big smush and big stocky. Yeah. I mean, some of them I, I am, but like not all of them. I just yeah. feel bad for them because I know because they can't breathe. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think I I may I think I this is a good topic just because like we, I'm sure you and I have plenty of clients with bully breeds and you know they have they kind of just like get one and then they don't expect. Yeah, I don't know what to expect for sure. Um, I think you know. The primary issues that I see are uh, reactivity to other dogs or or dog aggression. Um, so I think, you know, I think it's it's helpful to be honest that that's what the breed you know is is genetically predisposed to. You know, every breed has something that they are uh, they are more they they're better at or or worse at. And you know, the pitties were were bred to to fight other dogs. So um, you know, the idea that all of them are gonna be your nanny dog and and whatever, I don't I don't really totally understand where that idea came from. But um, 
you know, I don't think that any dog should be your nanny dog. Like, I just don't think that that's a good idea. Um, but I think, you know, living in an apartment with a pit bull is also, it can be difficult. Like, I think um, being prepared that uh, that they're not always the easiest dogs, that they're strong and that they do have that uh, genetic predisposition to be uh, potentially dog aggressive or at least to, you know, not back down from a conflict um, can be tough. So I think, you know, it's important that people are prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even so, I mean, I've had a quarter of people or clients that I talk to that are like, like I've bring them back to a little history lesson where, you know, you mix a terrier with a, a certain terrier with a bulldog and then you get a pit bull and then yeah. they're yeah, just and like, they're, I mean, they're really cool in that aspect too. But I think, you know, being prepared for even the fact that they like, they need an outlet, they need to play tug, they need to do all those things. Um, they're not just like the, the couch potato dog, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, you know, Anya, if someone tries to go and adopt a dog from you, you know, like what are some critiques or what are some criteria or what are some like uh, requirements that you would, that is like, you know, mandatory or like necessary. Yeah. So I try to not have like mandatory things because I do think, you know, it, it does exclude some people uh, that it shouldn't, you know, we try to have sort of a, a specific conversation with every person asking like what their lifestyle is like. Do they, are they looking for a dog to go to the dog park? Cause that's probably not uh, what they're going to get. You know, even if you have a really social Pitbull, I, I just am not really an advocate of, of going to dog parks with them in general. Um, oh, sure. But I think, you know, the, they're going to potentially have more prey drive. They're going to, you know, potentially not be as easy to walk on leash. They're going to, you know, um, I think obviously in the, in the perfect world, everybody would have a fenced in yard and all of that stuff. But I don't think that's necessary. I just think it has to be sort of a person that's willing to like to take on a responsibility because they can potentially be a little bit of a liability. You know, you have uh, a dog that that is genetically predisposed, predisposed, whatever, uh, to, to, you know, being in a conflict and, uh, and, and kind of not being able to back down. And then you get, you know, the off leash dog in the park that comes up looking for a conflict or something like that. And it's, it's scary. Um, and there are, you know, a lot of really good ones, but I think it's important to be sort of aware of like what they're, what they're made for and that they're not the easiest dog that you can just bring to everybody's house and go have play with their dogs. You know, they do have, kind of a rougher play style. And um, I think it's just important to be sort of aware of what you're, what you're walking into. Um, so, you know, maybe going on groups on Facebook and seeing like what people are, are dealing with with their dogs sometimes would be helpful or, um, and even just spending like real time with the dog, you know, like really just going and, and taking the dog off property and seeing like, what are they like? Do they, you know, are they going after every bird in the neighborhood? Or are they just kind of sticking with you? Like, Kind of getting to know the dog that you're you're going to take home you know it's not mm -hmm. not just the picture of it it's like what is the dog really like mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh yeah i mean sometimes too i think like i've i've worked with a couple bullies or even like some puppies that are just like super happy go lucky and they're super just super all is good and then you know sometimes there's like a switch sometimes some as they get older they flip a switch whether it's just yeah. like you know with whether their answer is just like immediately jumps to conflict or, you know, even like with the prey drive, I, I have, uh, let's see, I have this little pit dachshund thing named Charlie over here. Who's like this wiener, wiener dog body, but pit bull head. And then, okay. uh, my roommate has a little blue nose pity mix that, you know, they wouldn't start a fight per se, but if there was like a fight in the middle of the park or there was like a fight, like yeah. in their presence, they're like, oh, we're going to jump yeah, in I on that. Think that. They're not as good at, uh, like, they're a little bit policing. They want to get involved. If something else breaks out, they're a little bit like, you know, okay, that's going to be fun. And oh, it, it is oh, yeah. for them, like the way that you get out their drive on the, on the spring pole and all that stuff. Like it is, it is practicing rehearsal of, of that behavior, you know, and it's, it's fun for them, but that, that makes it hard to, you know, get them not to do if it's fun for them. Yeah. I mean, it's just like something for, people to be aware. I mean, it's just like, I just call it sharking at that point, you know, yeah. but you know, it's, um, it's like pit bull. I mean, I love pit bulls. I used to have a red nose pit bull and she was absolutely gorgeous. She was so sweet with everybody and it was just nice, but you know, it just, it's it just kind of, for sure. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, pit bulls just want to be inside your shirt or in the, under the covers and all that. And they're just, like super sweet i just feel like um you know 
people just need to be aware of what they need to provide with the dog. Yeah, yeah, and I think and, that, that's a lot of it. Like, it's not just the neighborhood walk, and and that's like that's not going to do it. Um, it's just not. So, uh, you know, I think people need to be committed to to like doing some enrichment and some training and some tugs and some you know like some outlets for these dogs because they're not getting you know what what ends up happening I think is that they're not able to go all the places that all these other dogs are able to go and get those outlets out um and so they have you know a lot of pent-up energy and then they get out and they they're just they're bored like there's nothing else for them to do mm -hmm. um so you know and I think it's important for people to be aware of like how to break up dog fights if, if that happens and you know to be aware that you have a powerful animal, whatever it is, you know, a pit bull, a shepherd, whatever, like you should be, you should, you should know how, how to do that stuff. Um, and I think, you know, it's, they're, they're wonderful dogs and I, I really truly love them. Um, and I, I love how social they are. Like, I think that the dogs, the, the pities that have, you know, human directed aggression genetically, like that's, that's not really right either. You know, they should, uh, especially like the, the fighting lines of dogs, they really should be able to be uh, you know, kind of split up by somebody like a total neutral third party and, and not redirect on anybody. So um, they are they are incredibly social with people for sure. Yeah. Um, why you love them. Yeah. I mean, like with, pe with people, there's just like um, people like I usually don't get that much issue with pitbulls and other people. Like yeah, they're super just, do, they're just, just things a little wrong. Yeah, they're just usually so wiggly about it. I mean, with the dog stuff and the animals, that's just that kind of just comes with the territory. But um, Part you know, that's it. that out. My first foster took the leg off one of my cats, and I was like, "Oh, this is serious." Okay, got it. Like, yeah, yeah. Hold on, this there's a comment real quick. Uh, Rob, I can't find the beginning of this. I take it we don't take we don't think much of pities. No answer. That's Pitbull or Shepherd, you're scary. Uh, I mean, I and Robin, I mean, we're not, we're not putting hate on the breed. I mean, we're just trying to. No, it's all I have. Just like... I, I love them. I, I don't want to, sorry, I didn't mean to come off that way at all, but I, I really truly love these dogs and it's all I'll ever have. And I run a rescue and, and house them in my house. Like I, I love these dogs. I just think that people should be, you know, aware of what they're walking into. It's not yeah, that... the dog that can get along with every, every dog and take, take everywhere. It's just not. Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we're just talking about this. I mean, like, it's on a YouTube video at this point where, you know, I can just go and copy paste this and then just be like, hey, you know, if you're thinking about getting bully breed, just, uh, you know, let's, let's yeah. let, watch this and just be aware. Be aware you know, of the so. that they are not going to get along with dogs. Like, be aware that that might be a thing and, and can your lifestyle handle that? So, if it can, totally go for it. Like, they're wonderful, wonderful dogs and they're not impossible to manage. Like, it's not like you you have to do all the dog park stuff and whatever. And it's just, you know, it might be a possibility that your dog will be dog aggressive. Like it just is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, it's just, I mean, they're powerful breeds, you know, we just, yeah. we just, have, we just have to be aware of it. But, um, yeah. Kim you know, and I, a lot about like the ethology of the breeds and like, it, it just, it's interesting to look at it from that perspective, if that's what they were bred for. So when we get ones that are super social, it's, it's almost, you know, abnormal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we kind of get like, I think we get like a lot of them that are like super content, super sweet. And then maybe there's like still a little bit of that core, still like a court. I don't know how, I don't know with the numbers, you know, how you feel about it. It's like, I feel like most of them are like the super sweet ones. And then, you know, you get like some of them that were rescued from like the fight cases or like the, um, or just with the b bad genetics that kind of just yeah, get and mixed with it. The ones with the from the fight cases are so sweet. Like they're sweeter than the other like just homebred dogs, you know. And they have to be because they they really like they cannot redirect on their people. They cannot like they have to do it. So um, you know, and it's it's sort of its own self rewarding thing for them. But I think uh, you know you have to be aware that even those dogs like they are in the community. You know, I think as much as people think they're all. Um, they're not they they are you know the, the ones that are are not winning those fights just kind of get turned loose um and it's not the bait dog thing either it's it's real dogs that just aren't good enough fighters but you know have that genetic predisposition i can't mm -hmm. say that anymore um it's okay you can just be like maybe pre pre-dis or something yeah. like that um, um 
but it's, you know, those dogs are in the community and, and make the average people maybe don't see them, but those are, that's what people come to me with is some pretty serious uh, dogs that have done some serious damage to people and to, or to dogs really. Yeah. And I think, um, I, cause, cause we've met at the J Jack workshop, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the In Utah. Yeah. 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 And so it's like, I mean, we talk, I mean, just knowing the way Jay works and, you know, just with dog trainers in general, it's like your, your dog, your pit bull or whatever breed you have with issues, you, it doesn't have to, it can still have a really nice life. Absolutely. It yeah. Can, That's it, what, yeah. The most important thing is like getting training and getting it so that they can do all that stuff. But the, like the dog park, which might not be the thing. Yeah. Or just at this point, like just know your dog enough where you, where you know, certain contexts or certain situations, certain yeah. social, um, and that can be really areas. hard for adopting. You know, you don't know the dog you're getting. And I, I do get a lot of people, I think, that that recently adopted dogs that aren't what they thought they were going to be. Um, you know, a lot of the shelters, I don't think, really do a whole lot of evaluations with other dogs. And if they don't like the results, maybe they, I don't know, I'm not going to go there. But um, I, there are a lot of, especially lately, I think some really sketchy dogs that have been, that have gotten out of shelters because of COVID and all that stuff. And, um, you know, the shelters are, are really well-intentioned. I've worked in shelters all my life and I, I have done that before. Like I've said, it's not a pit bull, it's a, you know, whatever mix, but trying to get these dogs into homes, I totally get it. Uh, cause they're lovely dogs and you want to see them thrive, but, um, it's important for the shelters to be honest with people too. You know, people need to be aware of what they're taking on and maybe they'll be totally willing to do it, but you have to tell them. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing is just communication is super important or just, um, just getting as much info as you can. And then knowing like, you know, is this a dog that is worth keeping? And is this, a, is this yeah. something can I maintain? Like, like make, bring it around your friends, dogs that you know are really friendly first and see like, what kind of reaction you get there because if you you know if you get a reaction with dogs that are are not badly intentioned like that's the problem um yeah. and not one that's unfixable by any means but it does you know it's it's hard to live with one of those dogs yeah i mean it's like nobody wants to live with a project dog unless you know you're dead set on it you're mentally prepared for it and you know it's uh... i don't want to do it i have one here right now that uh I have my neighbor has two little Jack Russells and they broke my fence the other day and got into my property. And I have this really, really serious dog here. And like, I don't like, it's not fun to live like it, like in fear, you know, it's not. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that they're all like this, but there are certain dogs out there that are not fun to own. Like they're just, they're just not. So I think just knowing what you're getting into, it doesn't mean don't get a pit bull. It means just check out which pit bull you're getting. Like, ask for some video, ask to walk it around the street and see what happens. Like, just don't bring a, a strange animal into your house. It's, it's a, you know, it's a pretty. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I totally hear you. I, I mean, just dogs in general, people course, yeah. kind of, people just think, oh, the dogs should be okay with having a, another strange dog come into the it. house. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just like, but I want to, and I was just like, yeah, but does your dog, but does your dog prefer it? Yeah. If it's like, you know, depending on how you, uh, bring the dog into the house, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just everyone sues each other. Everyone like, yeah, it's such a sue happy world these days that you know lawsuits, yeah, you bills. Know, what do you want now? It's it's you know, and that's like a potential. You know, it is with any dog, but I think you know, besides the dog aggression stuff, I think they're they're more prone to just like over arousal behaviors in general, like jumping up and and grabbing stuff is is in their genetic line. So. Um, you know, I think that's just stuff like sometimes they can be a little bit rough with kids. Sometimes they can be wonderful with kids. It's like any dog you don't, you don't know, but, um, you know, just be aware. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you too, I mean, just like, I mean, Dobermans had their day where they were all super dangerous Roddies and then German Shepherds, even like Goldens, like way back in the day, I think, cause they were overbred and with like, I think with Air Buddy when they started, when it like, premiered that's when everyone started like getting goldens and not all of them were like pretty responsible and all that good stuff so yeah. i mean it, it can happen totally with it so um but i mean with that i mean so you know we have like pit bulls you know they get high they get really aroused and you know they they love to do high arouse things and you know might not be best suited for interacting with every single dog or just like you know like most dogs or most people that don't get along with everybody yeah 
um like what what are some things that you suggest to uh like clients or potential adopters like what's some activities that you would recommend them doing with their dog like you know tugging we all be, we talked about this when yeah. we, we I went love to see jay because it's far away from your hands so if you have a dog that's kind of you know, coming at you a little bit trying to, to grab stuff um i like to get them as far away from my body as i can um i like a lot of like foraging activities like just putting you know kibble in the grass and letting them kind of just find their own their own uh breakfast or dinner um most of most of my pitties love to rip up like Amazon boxes and Kongs and stuff like that. Um, but I also uh, recommend, you know, like whenever you're bringing a new dog home, I would keep, you know, a drag leash on it uh, for the first couple of months, honestly. Like you just never know what's going to pop up. Um, I think that like three day, three week, three month thing is is way underrated. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think people get really comfortable in the first two weeks and then they take the drag leash off and then all of a sudden the dog starts jumping on them and they've got no way to stop them except grabbing their collar or doing something that's going to, you know, cause a little bit more uh, frustration. Um, I think the other thing with the pitties that, um, you know, the, the leash pressure stuff really matters. Like they really not enjoy, but like the, the leash pressure kind of turns them on a little bit. So I think, you know, the more that you're pulling back and, and like in dog interactions, freaking out and, and, and taking the leash like super tight, it's going to make it worse if you can, you know, just sort of try to make it a little bit more natural and, make some arcs and make some room and <clears throat> um i think in general the pitties do really well with like bat type style stuff where they they can make their own space and just realize like they don't need to go over to that thing and, and make a con conflict if they don't want it they can just sort of walk away by themselves um they do really well with like decompression walks and just letting them get in nature car rides that sort of stuff um and i tend to think if they're off leash it is usually a little bit easier for them to have interactions but obviously if you're not sure which way that's going to go then don't do that um but i i do tend to tend to see like a lot of the pitties get really stiff at the first intro and then like slam themselves into a into a play bow and so if you're not letting them do that second part it can come off really uh a little bit offensive to the other dog so um yeah, yeah. i mean i mean just like i mean with the whole pulling back i mean that whole oppositional reflex i mean if yeah. you're if you if you're letting like a chihuahua or a german shepherd or great dane like have a harness back harness and you're pulling back it's like no different from um pulling a guy off a bar fight you know and you're just yeah. creating that frustration you're just That's amping them up more um so i mean I mean, that's definitely just oppositional reflex with dogs in general. But I mean, with the pitties, it's just like you have to have. It's like same thing with any other dog. You have to just um, be, be smart on what how you use the leash. And then, you know, like, I mean, Chad Mack and Jay always talked about, you know, not creating a lot of conflict with those dogs on leashes yeah. and just. Um, and you see you it, take, the you start to hold tight. They're like they're ready to go and they weren't two seconds ago, you know. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like decompression walks or just like you know just that exposure because like for me i try to i try to at least teach dogs like that or reactive dogs in general just to just be okay with the presence of other animals and dogs yeah. just be exposed on a leash and we don't necessarily have to be have to interact with them or anything inter interact with it but then like if you do want your dogs to be off leash somewhere then that's where you know we should do your research or it's like you know i mean there's all these different things from there's like private dog parks you could rent i mean even like um yes, you know, like spot. even like sniff even like sniff spot like yeah. it's like literally an airbnb for like yeah. backyards and sensitive yeah. properties that you could Love look up uh, backyard and borrow it for a little bit like just go enjoy being with your dog but they don't have to go find their fun with somebody else you know yeah and then like you can literally book it for an hour and then it's like it's cheap as like eight or ten bucks depending on where it is around you i have a couple i have a couple and i've been ref i've been sending all my reactive dogs or dogs with issues there or they just or they just don't trust they have a recall recall yet like to those yeah. places practice yeah to practice or just let them have their fun as you say yeah and then and even with that like you know that important thing about finding their fun because we kind of just assume that they're that we're fun <laughs> mo we're fun or most dog things like let them be dogs is fun yeah. where it's like if we let them be yeah they're gonna they're, find them in a way that we don't want them to find yeah. it's not every dog right but the ones i i think maybe it's just more that what i'm getting exposed to as 
as dealing with more aggression or something. But uh, there are some really like there are some dogs that look at dogs and are like, great, let's start this. You know, uh, there's not a lot of them. But there's there's certainly some. Well, then the problem is, too, like your dog could be perfect. Like, you know, my Malamar has some issues with other dogs, too. But then like if no one messes with her, she's fine. Like she just learns to pass by quick sniff, maybe flare with an intact male like yeah. over yonder and then comes back to me. But then the problem is like you have to consider like other people's dogs. Totally. Because it's li that's why it's like kind of just so risque because it's like you could be the best owner with the world with the pit bull that's super solid and all that. But then the minute like small Fifi, yeah, Yorkie or, you know, yeah. you getting sued, like it, it sucks, but it is the way that it is, you know? Yeah. I so that's where it's like when you have like powerful breeds in general or just like you know dogs that are just more likely to have a short fuse yeah. that's where it's like you just have to strategize like okay like where where's the place i can be a little yeah. bit more comfortable than usual and where's the where's the place where i need to just have them with me just yeah like leave, leave it or just like you know i have whether i had to have like pepper spray on my in my tree pouch or something or yeah. like i think even like jay jack the other day i mean when we were at their workshop he was like talking about having those, uh, you know, those little crackle pop things that you would throw on the ground, it's like fire, yeah. fireworks. Yeah. He was like, say, he was like saying, yeah, just put that in your tree pouch and just throw it towards when the dog is coming towards you. Yeah. And I was like, I, I to think like most dogs are not going to go up to a dog that looks like it's going to eat them, right? Like I think that most of them have enough uh, self sustainability to not do that. But the dogs yeah. that are also looking for conflict. If you get two of those together and something breaks out like it's it's hard yeah i mean it's no different from people you know you go to mm -hmm. you go some you go somewhere you have one guy that doesn't know how to handle his emotions and then there's another guy that just doesn't want to negotiate and want to do the same thing and then outburst exactly yeah um and then we just get that attention or sometimes we're just like oh we're just gonna not look at that they're they'll, they'll solve it on their own and then yeah that's yeah that's the bigger thing for me like they're not going to solve it on their own so you got to get yeah. them out of there um you know and i think there's like that interesting idea of like it's all in how they're raised and it's it's not at all uh i think you know especially dealing with the dog fighting dogs like there are some of them that can be like the top prize fighter and then all of a sudden they don't have to be and they they won't you know there are some that will never be able to to be you know quote unquote trained out of that or whatever but uh there are, you know, genetics can go either way. Um, yeah. But I think it's important to to look at, like, it, it might not be how they're raised. It could just be, like, bad genetics. You could have a pit bull puppy. You could have whatever puppy. Uh, and it might, you know, you could socialize it to as much as you want. And it might still not be great with dogs. Or it might. That's kind of the, yeah, that's kind of the problem to you. Every time you get one from a rescue or every time it's, like, some of those dogs, you kind of don't know where they're originating yeah. from. Nah, nah, you know, uh -huh. and it, uh -huh. it, the, like lack of exposure to stuff you know like a lot of people who give up their dogs probably didn't take them a million places and introduce them to a hundred people like they're probably not those people yeah yeah i mean it's like i mean pet bull puppies are so cute i love pity but i mean like when my roommate brought her brought hers i was just like at first i was like skeptical but then susie <laughs> brought her in into the house and then i was just like 10 week old little thing and i'm just like Okay, fine. I'll get the crate ready. Were you skeptical of the breed? Ske no, like just skeptical. I was just like, we're getting a puppy. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we, and then she brings her in. I'm just like, okay, I can't say no to a pit bull face. I'm just like, what was your first like experience with hoodies? Um, so this was uh, this is when I was in high school. Um, I went, I was in New Jersey, uh, high school kid, mm -hmm. and I had like a Shih Tzu Dachshund and a Corgi already, and then. I've been, I've been volunteering at a rescue there, like every Saturday, I go to PetSmart to help them out. And then this one dog on Pathfinder that I put, really gorgeous little red nose pitbull. Well, not little. She's like 60 pounds. She was big. Um, <laughs> she was super pretty. She was super nice. And I show my mom this picture online. And she's like, hell no, we ain't getting a pitbull. It's like that, that dog. It's like you've seen all the dog whisperer episodes. Like, yeah, but this could be, you know. Oh, look, you fixed it. It's like, look, this could be, this could be my junior. This could be yeah. the daddy kind of thing. And then they were just like, oh my god. <laughs> and then, 
it just so happened that when my mom picked me up, I was like, oh, look, she's here. Oh. And then she got to meet her a little bit. And then all of a sudden, this big, this tall guy, long haired dude with tattoos is like checking her out. And my mom was just like having a bad hunch about it. And she's like, I'm going to go for a walk with this dog. Yeah, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> and then after that, it was like, we went home. We went, we took her home. <laughs> and it was like, she was, she was great with the little dogs. I mean, even my dogs like snapped at her. Yeah. And she was like, okay, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. It's it. like, I mean, some of them can be like super, super tolerant. It's just not all of them, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, like she, she like would. Genetics, you've got the top of the ladder and the bottom and sometimes you get lucky, but. Oh, she's super, she was the she was the best. I mean, she was dog reactive, and I was you know high schooler, not knowing what to do, right. and uh, right. walking on a gel leader, and you know it was like I struggled a little bit. Yeah. But overall, it was like you know she was that dog. Like we went to the park, and she was super playful. This is when I was super novice. Yeah. And yeah, but listen, sometimes it works out just fine, you know. It works out just fine, and you know, like one time we brought her to PetSmart just to bring it to the vet and then like he had this little Maltese puppy climb on her head and she was a mama oh. dog and I was just like oh, oh god okay oh I, I was just like you know and I was watching it the whole time and you know yeah. she was and it was like all pretty good but then we had one incident where the, like the neighbor came out with a 30 foot flexi with a Yorkie and the Yorkie like ran up to her like being hella snarky and I was like oh also son and I pulled back on the collar and then, and then you know like well it just I mean just had one had one little stitch, but it was like, of course, we, they made a report about, about yeah. it, and my mom was just, um, didn't want to keep the dog after that. And so that kind of just motivated me a little bit more after that, after we rehomed her to just be more responsible after that with the dogs. And, you know, you some, sometimes you just need that one dog that teaches you, like, okay. Yeah, that's um, a bad story, but it, I'm sure it did teach you. She was, she was great, you know. I'm sure she got adopted and super super easy but you know i saw pictures of her and she was she was amazing i some that's why i was like i still have i love the breed even though yeah you get all the you get all the bad you hear all the bad rep but you know it's like this breed is amazing i love yeah, it they are super loyal and they're they're great companions like there's there's really socially like they're they're wonderful dogs you know it, it just um some of them are are you know artificially selected to be a little bit more than we can handle i think as a as a society you know we have like even if you can handle your dog shit happens like i have a six foot fence and dogs are still in my yard when i wake up in the morning like you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you you just can't control every other you know environmental thing sometimes sure i mean i tell people all the time like 90 percent of the time you'll get you'll have it handled but then 90 10 percent shit happens in life and then it just it is what it is you know so um yeah, and I do think, you know, if you know how to break up fights, uh, I don't, I, it's not the end of the world, even. Like, it's not going to kill your dog, too. Like, dog fights that kill other dogs do take, like, hours. Like, you have time to to get in there and, and get one of them off or do whatever, but you have to know, you know, how to do that. And grabbing collars would not be my, you know, my top suggestion or oh, trying to pry their mouths open with your hands, because I've done that, too. Um but it's like it's all instinct and i i just i i don't really want other people to learn the the way that i did like i learned through a lot of experiences that i wish hadn't happened a lot of dog fights that i wish hadn't happened you know uh, mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah i i learned. yeah no i i can relate i mean i had to pry one bully off of a dog and uh, you know that uh, kind of took my fingernail off unfortunately oh, but it yeah, was fine looking at you looking at your hand wondering if there was something related there yeah no i was just like that that's i was just like i just went in like yeah it's like, so instinctual and i'm sure you know it's like what a mama does with it like you just go into pure you know panic mode and you don't think about it but um and you, honestly with the pit bulls like you get lucky because they don't usually redirect and so you can sort of do that it's just completely ineffective but you can you know you can grab their jaws when they're fighting and they probably won't bite you but uh it's not you know it's still not I mean, yeah, I mean, even like after, I mean, like with you, like after they adopt a, a dog from you, do they continue? Like, do they? Well, I say, I think it's like a follow. It's like there's a question, there's a follow up question for this. So, like, um, when you foster your your bullies, right? And um, do you put in foundation work and work with them? And then, like, um, if they get adopted, do they 
end up continue working with you like after that or um, do they just contact you when needed not an ideal scenario but it doesn't always happen that way they always spend um you know usually the really perfect ones can spend you know less than two weeks here but they always spend uh at least usually a couple of weeks or a couple of months here so they they definitely get foundation stuff from, and uh and we just like find out a lot of information on them so i think that evaluation period of like taking them out of the shelter and seeing what you've really got is super important you know i've had dogs that um i had one dog that played like beautifully at the shelter with other dogs and then i brought him home and he immediately attacked two dogs like the, both dogs that i tried to introduce him to so i think you can get false positives and a whole lot of false negatives too so i think a lot of dogs can look really aggressive in the shelter and then maybe you take them out from behind the gate and they're totally fine. Um, so I think it's important to, you know, take that time to take, to see what you've got. Do you have like a high prey drive dog? Should you not put that with kids? Maybe, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, we're lucky that we've been able, like I have, we have the capability to sort of keep them as long as we need to, to make sure they find the right home. But um, I, I tend to think that by the time adopters are reaching out, they're sort of at their limit, but, um, and I don't know what that is. Like, I don't know what I can do to, to kind of catch that before it happens. But by the time I hear from people, I feel like it's usually not great news. Um, but sometimes. Okay. But they, but like, assuming, you know, you did work with those dogs and then like you gave them the whole gist about like what to do with this dog, yeah. what not to do with this dog. And here's what, here's this list of, you know, 10 commands of what we yeah. did. The hard, I mean, and, it's hard people don't always, you know, you can be like, this dog's not good with kids, and then they're going to bring it around kids. And like, you could only tell people so much. Uh, right. And I, it's almost like the more you tell people not to do something, the more that they want to do it so they can see it themselves. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It's just, you know, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. I mean, that would. I mean, I I was just like curious for the most part with that yeah. with that. Yeah. I mean, in general, I'm in contact with as much as I can, and I I try to follow up as much as as we can but usually by the time they leave here they're they don't have that many you know issues that they need to work through yeah i would say too i um you know i mean just if you're not familiar with the bully breeds the bullies in general just don't wait for a bad thing to happen and yeah. then call a trainer yeah. just they usually like when you play tug they're usually very verbal and and or vocal and you know that can scare people who haven't had a pit bull before like usually it's because they're having a blast um but you know like i've gotten a couple of calls on that type of stuff like oh, i think she's growling at me and like she's playing with you i promise but you know if a different dog did that yeah like it might be different yeah i mean honestly it's just i just tell people i would just suggest the people that are watching or just like potential people that do get pit bulls you know if you get a bully breed and if you know your stuff and your experience cool if you just for first time or you know you like this dog and you want to make it work you know just get a trainer yeah. involved just have them come to the house see what you can do to improve the property or just you know um yeah, see if you can put the structure in there i mean if you have someone like you and i that know grc you know that's yeah i think um, i did you know, push people in the direction of finding somebody that's familiar with with pit bulls in, in particular that knows that type of stuff, you know, because there's a whole lot of yeah. people who can come to your house and teach you sit and down and that's not going to fix it. Yeah, I mean, like my favorite activity is to teach a dog, you know, when it, especially with a breed like that, you know, it's like, you know, play tug, you know, we go through like ready, yep. easy, enough, you know, all the cues to teach them and then like just get them used to just yeah, bring that out. Lifestyle thing instead of, you know, just training. Yeah, fulfilling the dog because, you know, like bullies have their own way of fulfilling it, but we can't just give it to them like that. Otherwise, that's kind of uh, yep. bad. So that's where yeah. it's like, you know, bad we bring. The, yeah, I mean, I mean, we as people like we we take dogs in our house and they're basically just prisoners in our house for the most part. It sounds mean, but it's like, unfortunately, they just can't go in a car and just yeah, drive off. And them. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hard so, uh, to do like, you know, I, I am in favor of, of humane euthanasia for the dogs that really can't uh, exist in this in this society, but I, it doesn't happen very often. I think I've had maybe four in the past couple of years, but um, you know, it is, it is important to know that like some of these dogs are not pets. Yeah, I mean like people, even like for the most part, if you know, if you can give that dog a job and it could be like spring pole. Could be anything, you know, just give them something. Yeah. 
Yeah, it could be spring pole. Spring pole, you just get a bungee, yep. get a toy. Like it doesn't have to be like the fancy yoga pole yeah. thing. It could be just like a simple. I bought one for like twenty five bucks. It's like uh, and with a panic snap, and I throw it across a tree branch, and that's you know that's just as that's easy. That's something that someone can just go put it in their backyard and go let them tug it out and let it out into their system. Even like a treadmill or even like the slat mill, you know, like. Yeah. I there's so many yeah out. there's yeah there's so much um you just purchased one yeah i'm excited sweet i i'm i bought one from my friend in san diego but i have to i have to see how her schedule is so she can bring it up <laughs> here awesome. so but but yeah like you know slap mill tug nose work agility or like yeah dot, dot diving to do then just looking for conflict all day like that's not that's not going to be fun for them but or it will be fun for them but not fun for you yeah just fig yeah just uh figure out a strategy of figure out like a routine that fits your that makes your dog happy that brings out the best in that dog it doesn't have to we don't have to make him like conform to being like golden retriever if he's not yeah. if he does if he doesn't want to be you know that's you know jay always talks yeah. about yeah. i mean jay always talks about like his dog jacks you know it's like you do something the wrong way or you're looking the wrong way he switch it switch it flips the switch and then yeah meh right so um i think he's probably one of the first to admit that like that dog's not perfectly brain brain developed you know what i mean like some of them just aren't uh aren't able to really like figure out their emotions and and regulate them so um yeah i mean thankfully like that dog ended up in the right hands you know yeah and i mean it's like with the right hands and then you're like and he tells you, you know, and you wouldn't have no, or you wouldn't have found out the hard way. And so that's why it's kind of like, you know, and people just think going for a walk is like the exercise. Yeah, I have the hardest time getting people to wrap their brain around. Like I don't even take my dogs for a neighborhood walk. Like if we're gonna go to the park, we drive up the street and we take them out. And you know, like it's it's just, uh, it's not, it's not enough. Yeah. And so it's just like, you know, your dog's still pulling, pulling, pulling. And I mean, it's just like, you know, the walk is not just the exercise. I mean, yeah. you, we have all the different exercise, like the tug, the nose work, the, the maybe a little bit of obedience and then spring pole, yeah. uh, weight pole, slap mill. Yeah. And so much and, easy to do, like even in your backyard, you know, it's, it doesn't need to be this whole big setup and, you know, it's, it's something you can, you can put together. Yeah. And then also for just in case people don't rent uh, new dog people or dog, uh, pet owners that don't know what a slap mill or uh, weight pull is. Weight pull is just, you know, the dog. Uh, what do they usually pull? Is it just like the five pounder weight or is it 10 yeah. pounder weight? Yeah, I think it depends on the size of the dog, but it's it's basically like a harness and uh, weight structure. Yeah. Also specialized harness, not your not just your Petco or PetSmart. Uh, Harness and then um, slap mill is just like a treadmill that runs on its own. You know, when the dog starts moving, then the mill starts to run itself, and there's a clip that clips to the harness to the back. So they are a little pricey, but you know, if they're if you got if you got a dog, high drive dog, or you got a dog that likes to run, you know, put them on that. Um, yeah, that's how they really get fulfilled. Like that neighborhood walk is not is not going to do it. Yeah, and I mean that's where it's just kind of just like just being strategic about it. You know. Um, mm -hmm. And even like just five minutes of a good play tug session, it's enough. Like they, they don't have a lot, they don't go for long, you know? Like I feel like mm -hmm. the babies have like a five to 10 minute window and then they're like, all right, I surrender. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's the thing. It's just like, I think maybe I'll have to get someone to do this like uh, another time, but, may, but just going right away, just establishing like the foundation with, with them as soon as they get home, kind of don't wait till they start acting out to do something yeah. and then getting that structure, working it's on like- It's a lot easier to take away, or it's a lot easier to give freedom than it is to take it away. So if the dog's already on the couch and all that stuff, like it's gonna be hard to get them off of that if, you know, and, and be like, if, for that to be fair to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, it's just kind of just like, I mean, if you have a dog, I mean, you have a dog that's pretty solid with other dogs and just, and other people cool now your your job is to make sure that you keep it that way you keep it you keep it that way and don't let like 
it like you you'll keep all the shady shadier dogs or that you if you see a dog that's like picking on another dog over a distance i'm just gonna be like hey leave it hey hey we're going yeah. we're gonna go that way because like like i've done like to be fair i have done it where you know these guys they're somewhat they're good with dogs but then you know i may have put them around too many dogs and then now they're a little bit like yeah a little, little snarky about it. like they're not terrible but it's just like in the worst life yeah you you know you burn you kind of they kind of get burnt out so it's like different experiences and then also too you could also i mean your dog could also learn other bad habits yeah. while they're with other dogs so it's kind of just like uh very, very tricky because you know it's like you it's like look at them play and then all of a sudden okay. your dog learned this that's not play anymore hold on yeah yeah right so um i mean just having a good system you know it's like you know with jay or it's just like saying you know like every time every time you hear ready and your dog's just like yeah it's amazing how comes. well that works like it doesn't matter what your ready is like if it's to play it's to go outside it's to do whatever like they're just they get it like they, that on and off switch they get it and i mean like if you I mean, for any, I mean, especially for the bullies or like any of the shepherds, if you have the tug toy, if you got like something that it could be a towel rag or something like that, but if you condition it enough and then you're out in the world, yeah. like, like with me, with my shepherd, we could be out somewhere and then I see a dog that we're not sure of, or she's starting to get a little, like, I want to chase that dog. I just be, able to, I could just say, leave it. And I say the, those words and they go. Oh, yeah okay. hell yeah and yeah like who care less and you know that's something that you know i would i do like to teach my clients is just have on their in their toolbox or at least just like you know have it in their pocket or just have yeah. it where it's like I think actually a lot of the pities that i get will do well like walking past dogs if they have something in their mouth um and i don't know where why that is um but i do see it a lot especially like city city dogs like in New York City um, that are just kind of like over aroused and whatever, like they have a ball in their mouth and they can walk by anything in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, better to hold that than, than a dog, dog. Or, 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 or a squirrel, but yeah. you know, let's see. Yeah, I mean, we guess, so we yeah, we did talk about just, uh, we did talk about different exercises that you could fulfill the breed and, um, yeah, you want to talk about the fighting dogs a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Let's, let, let's talk about those because um, they are cool. They're they're cool. I have I have yet to I've yet to meet one or anything like that. But you know, just see, they're just they're like a special kind of sweet. I was I remember being like really nervous when I first went at, on my first deployment because I was like, how are we going to keep you know three hundred dogs that want to kill each other in an area? Like, how is that going to be safe? And they it's really interesting. Like they're not, I wouldn't necessarily say all of them are like looking for conflict. Like they know how to turn it off and on on their own. Cause I guess they're just all in a yard together, like on chains and they have to figure out like, okay, if I, if I try to fight you all day, I'm exhausted. Um, mm. But it's, it's really interesting to see, like you've got these, you know, like prize line dogs that have eight puppies and then like two of them are, you know, like, really bad from the beginning and then you've got like six of them that are just like beautiful regular dogs and it's it's even some of the older ones i mean i've taken i took home one that was two that were like almost 10 and had been you know in those in those rings all their life and like both of them are in homes like so so cool but i think that's kind of like if you think about the dog you're bringing home kind of like that like just pretend it's never been in a home before because i think then you're a lot more like strict in your house, not strict, but like you're watching them more. You're seeing what they're doing. You're like really looking at them and watching the time that they have and watching them interact with the new environment. And I think, you know, it's it's easier, like the dogs that I've brought in home that I know have never lived in a house before. Like, I feel like they acclimate almost quicker because I'm probably a little bit more like, okay, this is what we do here. Um, so I guess- Yeah, so you're, so you're kind of less like sympathetic, right? Just because- yeah. Or like, I, like just like I expect them to have no idea. So like when I open the fridge, I'm gonna back them up with my body a little bit because I think it's gonna scare them or they're gonna get into the fridge and grab something. Like in, instead of waiting for all that, all that stuff to happen or the trash can or whatever, like mm -hmm. expect that that stuff is gonna happen and expect that probably whoever had the dog last if they were in a home, like didn't do it the right way or they wouldn't have had to give up the dog. So, you know, right. expect that, that like those little annoying things that 
that do add up and annoy people enough that they're like, I can't have this anymore. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so bringing them home has been really cool because it's like, you know that they've never experienced anything. Like they've never done stairs. They've never done really anything uh, at all, but they've all been like brilliant with dogs. Like, like two of them go to dog parks and I never, ever, ever recommend that, but these, uh, they're incredible. So like, it's really interesting to see uh, how social some of them can be just like completely naturally. Um, and obviously there's a bunch of them, like I would say it's probably 50, 50, but um, it's, it's incredible that some of them just like are totally like, you know, all their genetics was wrong. You know, all of their raising was wrong and they're still good dogs. So on the yeah. other side, thing like you can get amazingly resilient dogs yeah and i mean that's the thing i think we're with us i think people in general we're kind of just like a fright like it's kind of we're just scared to try to try try it out because it's like it can go really yeah, good or yeah. it can go really bad yeah and then if we get real bad then we're just like we're just not gonna do this ever again and yeah um yeah and there's only one way to figure that out right yeah i mean that's what i mean that's why you have to have professionals do this and yeah. you know can't yeah, just we a lot of muzzles and you know a lot of safety equipment i mean uh i'm getting a couple of them this weekend and i'm putting up stuff on the trees where like you know a little like piece of cloth or a piece of yarn where like if somebody gets loose and somebody runs up i can stick one dog on the on the tree and i can go grab the other one and like being prepared for having you know three genetically uh real you know dogs you have to be prepared for that stuff so you just yeah i i think also i think also too just with um i, I had i had a thought but i totally i totally <laughs> forgot it now um i think i think with the i think like if you put them with the right people like yourself or like even like j jack or even like even like amy sadler who like helped that whole <laughs> case of like dog fighting dogs and then you know just try to see like how to give like placing them in actually working jobs whether it's like a police dog or like um yeah a I dog think diving dog to be seen as the same as shepherds and all that stuff like they have that same capability and the same drive it's just not a drive that we necessarily want but it can be put into like a job you know i mean I that yeah this dog is doing incredible and i i was there last year and there was still a couple of them left and they're they're incredible i mean just like really cool dogs that are hanging out with other dogs and it wasn't easy at all but um and not all of them were capable of doing it but a lot of them were yeah so i mean it's just about like you just have to have the like having that right support or having that right expert to help you out with that like give you like the some suggest some nice strategies for you but then yeah. also just like when you take in dogs like that just you know be smart, be careful, you know, have multiple people on hand, I think. And, you know, yeah. and, and then it's like, yeah, if you need to be responsible too. like, don't send the single old lady home with three pit bulls. It's like, what, what's going to happen if that doesn't go well. Right. But, uh, you know, all of us need to be like a little bit, like, it's not just saving a dog is really nice, but like, not if it's at the expense of every dog in your house. And if all the dogs are miserable, like, especially pity people, I think, tend to feel obviously like really bad for them because the shelters are full of them and they know that they're nice dogs, but uh, making your dog live with another dog if it doesn't want to live with another dog is A, not fair, but B, like unsafe. Sure, I mean, even I mean even like neighborhoods, even like people see you like across the street or like, <laughs> like I, I had it with my pit bull where I would walk down the street and we're, and we're in a very quiet community, but like they would see me with a pit bull and they would cross the street before I would get like six feet or like 10 feet towards them. Yeah. And like, be prepared for that too. You know, nobody's, which is kind of nice. You know, if you have, I, I, I that's never bothered me, but uh, you know, it is interesting to watch like people do really do cross the street. Yeah. I mean, even too, I mean, just teaching your dog to be muzzle trained and then just, just walk on the leash with the muzzle. That's just like, that's the best, like, why not? You know what I mean? If you think anything has a capability of happening, uh, why not? Yeah, because your dog's safe. And then you're the dog that, well, I mean, there's so, there's more to that equation. It's kind of just like when you get any dog and you just in general, I mean, especially with the bullies, it's just like you have to have, you want to have it where maybe the dog just, 
you give that dog reassurance that nothing's gonna happen not things gonna happen you know have something that if, in and case a dog comes something happen you know like don't let your your dog aggressive dog be attacked like if yeah. that's, that's part of your responsibility too is to be aware of your surroundings you know like don't go on a walk on your phone the whole time be aware of where dogs are make a little space if you see them like you know show your dog that you see it too and that you know like you can just go the other way yeah and you know i mean just like you know just just have to ex some people just have to be okay or just accept the fact that they have to do that they're not their dog's not going to be the friendliest or just uh Part of you have to be have to go through that phase of almost like uh i don't know like uh being upset about that like being like yeah that sucks i don't have that dog but this is the dog i do have and he's pretty cool i mean yeah i mean the other other than that if it's just not being around like all the dogs i mean he, otherwise he's still pretty Perfect. cool he's pretty fun i'm like dude that's i mean that's that's great versus just like a dog that's just not good with people dogs kids right right everything you know are, you know way harder and you don't like dogs that will go after you as an owner is not fun but uh, yeah I I, that's the cool part about the, the pities is like you're really very very unlikely to get one that is aggressive towards its owner like of course there are a few of everything but um like that's not really in their repertoire yeah i mean it's like there's so much there's so many different factors coming from like whether it's whether it is genetics or whether you know you just didn't do any exposure socializing from young or the dog we brought the dog at a very fragile social period to get mugged by another dog or you know just or accidentally had the country yeah you know just or just taking a dog that you weren't that you had felt bad for and then just wasn't equipped and had no idea right and so yeah i think that happens a lot i mean they're they're wonderful dogs and you see the pictures and you fall in love but i think going to a shelter and maybe being like hey this is my situation what dog do you have including a pit bull that would be willing to fit that bill like instead of going in being like i want this one you know when i when i worked in shelters i felt like everybody was just coming in i mean that's how it works you just look online at pictures and there's like barely any information and if you read it that's great but most people don't and most of it's like sugar coated in a way that makes it seem like the dog has no issues so um you know going in and, and looking at the dog that fits your lifestyle is is a lot more important than what it looks like i think i mean even like a pet finder or like a like you see Facebook posts or you see hundreds, like thousands of dogs on there. Yeah. And then you'll see a lot of, you'll see most of the bullies. They just go and say no other animals, no kids, no, like yeah. no, most of the time only have to be only dog. Yeah. And you know, that's the thing is kind of just like, it's not a lot of opportunities for those dogs. It's not a lot, of, it's not a lot of opportunities or it's kind of just like, you know, let your dog, I mean, it's kind of the same with my dogs. My dogs can be super, she's like, say hi, all that, like with dogs at outside of the home, but outside of home, they're just like, you know, this is my space. I just want to, yeah, I just relax. You know, I don't want to like wanna deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to deal with share or whatever. And it's kind of just like, you know, what it is kind of just, I tell people all the time, like, Hey, you know, you had this house for several years and then all of a sudden like you may you're super friendly with people but you want to come back home and just decompress and just we not don't ask the dogs if they want to bring this dog in you know we just do it to them yeah and i think people just uh you know i do i talk shit i talk shit about the pit bull sometimes just because <laughs> it's fun but it's just like, i still love them and all that i mean just also one i'm just aware what they're capable of two yeah. i just i just know how to work with it or manage it and yeah then, i think as soon as you figure out how to work with it it's they're they're a lot of fun you know yeah oh yeah they're oh yeah they're fun i mean with this little, this little one named apple you know she's like i i get a flare pole i get the little lamb thing and then just whoo, 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 she's just running like crazy yeah. if we play she's i mean she's terrible with tug right now she just finally figured out how to grab keep keep the toy in her mouth but you know we're we're still working on that yeah. and then this broken dachshund pity mix you know he don't really tug but his <laughs> niche is like his niche is just like digging holes and just looking at and i pointed to where the head of the gopher was like popping <laughs> out of the hole 
and she's he still is like, I'm gonna go dig in that hole oh, over there. I'm like, I still don't know where it is. <laughs> I'm like, it's right here. I just showed you where it is. Like, that's too easy. I'm gonna go find it here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and um, and at that point, you're kind of just like, you know what? Uh, they all just, have their things that they like we, to do, you know. Yeah, it's kind of just like you know, we we love them for who they are, you know, and we just know. I mean, it's just like everybody with everyone has some sort of issue or problem. We just yeah. Yeah, I well, think it's a great way to look at it. Like, just love them for who they are. I mean, trying to change what they're bred to do or trying to pretend that they're all just, like, nanny dog couch potatoes. Like, it's love the dog that you have. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure back then, because even, like, going back then in history, all everyone's dogs was off-leash and just can just walk around in the town and just, like, everyone was fine. But now that was, like, 18 or 1700s. Now we're in 2020, and no dog can be left found yeah. off leash outside of the house and it's hard to be a dog now i think yeah and so we've and so in some ways i just feel bad because they're just stuck in their houses and then they they're only going out when we're ready to go out or when we have to we run we their can whole lives we or when we have to we can or when we have to afford to get a dog walker or something like that so the dogs don't really get much in that sense yeah. But I mean, the best way, I mean, just like, just make your house a, a gym, make your dog, like give your, give, make your house a dog workout center. So you don't ever, so you can, you don't even have to leave. <laughs> we don't have to leave, but that also your breed is that like bully breeds or just any dog. They don't have it where they're just built up, built up, built yeah. up and they go somewhere and they, they just let it rip and loose on other things other dogs people and then we're just like oh my god where did this come from yeah like i'm so sorry he's doing this <laughs> yeah and just kind of thing and just and like i'll get scared to take them out again and it's this whole cyclical thing but there's a lot of stuff you can do with these dogs inside for sure you know um or in your garage or whatever like there's all sorts of stuff you can do yeah people can people can have still a fun life with a dog just you know working them at the house going for like places that isn't so populated on walks and then just letting yeah. them go do like go to go like a park at a certain time i mean people i mean kudos to those who do 3 a.m 4 a.m walks with their dogs you know so but just you do you live your life with your dog and if they're enjoying it cool yeah, yeah if sure. if no one's enjoying it then consider other options and you know it's just it's just how it is. I mean, no, some, no easy solution. Otherwise, we would be suggesting it all the time. But <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have a job. We wouldn't have a job. But you know, I mean, this is not this whole video was just to let everyone know about, especially I think pet owners or adopters, just like you know, just aware of what possibly can happen or like what you can do, aside from walking a dog in dog parks, yeah. and then just. Um, just just on a on another breed but also just just be smart that's the thing it's just like kind of like peter parker like mm -hmm. spider man like great power comes great responsibility it's just like hey dogs like this are pretty powerful so yeah and that's it i mean it's just power you know like they've they've got the same big jaws as every other big dog but uh you know it's it's in a very muscular little body but i just love them though i want i love squishing the faces i just like yeah. you know I love the pity kisses. Yeah, I told my boyfriend the other day that I wasn't sure I would take clients that didn't have pit bulls the other day because I, I don't know, they're just much easier for me to read and I know they're going to be social with people at least and I know, you know, you get in your niche of like, okay, I know this, this is dog, dog aggression, I know I got this, whatever. Um, but yeah. I, I mean, yeah, especially since you've been doing this for a while and it's like mainly that breed, Yeah. then it's kind of like you're just, and that's the thing yeah. too. That's the thing too. Uh, that's another topic. It's just like you know when pit bulls do interact with other dogs, they just have a whole different system of communication versus. Yeah, they're much uh, like rough and rowdier, I'd say. Um, and I think like they're pretty turned on by that chase style play. I think that can pretty easily go into like a predatory drift thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty rough and it's a lot of body slamming. And you know, you do that with a pit bull and a small dog, like it's not even aggression it's just a lot for that other dog to handle yeah and then you'll get the dogs that are just not sure about like you know shepherds are more about just like chasing 
other dogs or just yeah. something prey drive and then like all of a sudden you get this dog that just wants to body slam you right. dum, 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 and yeah. you're like this this dog's just like whoa i don't this is too much yeah i mean i think that, they beautifully together when they when they play but um you know I've, I've also done a lot of work on learning about you know different play styles and stuff and, and learning you know how they can how they can play because they can certainly have friends it's not like you know it's just dog parks and new dogs every day seems like uh, you're asking for trouble, but they can certainly have, you know, consistent friends. Yeah, I mean, I would just say, you know, just find dogs, study your dog's play style, and then yeah. get those dogs around dogs similar to that, and not just have your bouncy quarter, quarter, like, don't get your quarterback pit bull to go and body slam the insecure German Shepherd or a golden, like, at the random beach, you know, so. Yeah. You have to find the play style that works and then also just um and be aware of how to handle a situation if it happens you know like just be prepared yeah i think also just having the right role model dogs too just to get them around and just i have them like actually take a appropriate correction yeah it's really important because a lot of dogs especially mine <laughs> tend to over correct and start fights into incidentally yep and so it might not have been your dog to start it, but yeah. your dog will definitely finish it per yeah. se, right? So um, that's the thing. There's so much in the world that I, ideal world that we wish could just happen, but you know, it just doesn't. But it's some of those things, you know, like when you get a bully breed like that, okay, they're good with dogs, keep them with dogs that work pretty well, play well, get dogs that can probably teach them that it's not acceptable versus like some random dog that's just gonna bite your dog, yeah. you know, so. That's not helpful. <laughs> small i mean small dogs eh, just yeah i still am not a huge fan of big small dog like just that dynamic is can be hard uh one thing goes wrong and it's too much but um but some of them can yeah handle. yeah i mean i mean you've seen all the different comments you see i'm sure like the like i think more like the hispanics or like you go in more like the southern california area and you'll see like the, Everybody has a chihuahua uh, and a pit bull, yeah. Yeah, a combination between chihuahua and pit bull, and I'm just like, well, they kind of, well, I can kind of see the chihuahua be the pit bull, and the, <laughs> yeah, a pit bull, the chihuahua, but yeah, um, you don't know, take any shit, All right? <laughs> but I mean, it worked out, so okay. Yeah. But, but I mean, this is, I mean, yeah, this is just a nice topic to talk about, just because yeah. it's like, it feels like every expert knows, but that not the average joe person yeah, knows really and... talks about it like i i think it's important to know what you have you know like it's 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 a real possibility that uh you may have a dog to dog issue like you should know that you know yeah and i think i do want to i think i eventually want to bad dog it really doesn't it's it's literally what they were bred to do i mean it's like yeah your dog could still be a bad dog but it doesn't have yeah. but your your dog but that can still be a good dog and you could still love that yeah. that dog you know it's nothing like it's not the end of the world you just have to be smart with that dog yeah um sure. but yeah i mean i think i do want to i think we don't do enough play excuse you young lady why are you yawning so loud <laughs> i'm in i'm in an interview um <laughs> yeah she's just yeah she, my Malama's literally right here, just being needy about it. Oh, so cute! Very yeah. excited about it. Yeah, you're the dog. You're the dog that overcorrects. That I don't <laughs> let them. I don't let you be around other dogs. <laughs> so then you, and then you just let the other, and then you bring out the sharks and the other two. So yeah, they all learn that eventually, I guess. Right? They all learn that, or I just be. I just learned that. You know, that was. <laughs> I just learned after like few times i'm just like okay i'm done with you okay, fine. maybe this isn't the best idea this, this isn't the best i'm not being socially responsible right now so. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah no i think just topics like this is fun i mean just also play learning how to play with your dog is really fun i yeah. mean it's really important I'm that's why like, i play i love all of Jack's stuff i mean i think anybody who's looking to learn more about uh different types of play with your dog should go check him out yeah i think i'm gonna I think I I just have to message him when he's at home where we can do a the stream yard like this because yeah. I want to talk because I want to talk about like the importance of play with him and uh, just have and that I available know, for everybody. I think that's something I learned pretty recently. I think like he's always said it, but I didn't really understand that if your dog doesn't have that outlet, like 
uh, it's more likely for stuff to not go well. Like they need that outlet. It's not just a fun, it's not just a fun thing, but if you want your dog to be able to hang out with other dogs and to be, you know, under control or even just under control in general, I think the, the play stuff is really the way to go. I mean, yeah. I mean, dogs that don't have, that have behavior issues is because they don't feel fulfilled or they don't get yeah. to express that part of it. So yeah, sure. just having that, just having that is just really important, but, but no, this is, but this is great. You know, Anya, very, yeah, very appreciative. Uh, I'm make sorry some... about Motley again. Yeah. Martino just, uh, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Martino was a, he was a good one. I mean, he had his issues too, I, but you know, he's, he was just a Sounds insecure like golden. A pretty cool dog. He was, he was great. It was, he was amazing. You know, he, but, yeah, uh, he. I probably, I probably one of these days gonna go up to his pet puppy parents' house to give him a gift or just, uh, oh, just talk about it. So, that's but, funny. but, but outside of that, so, <laughs> uh, so Anya, do you have any big projects? Got any uh, new things going on, dog related or non dog related? Uh, well, I have the three dog fighting dogs coming this weekend, which is exciting. So I'll probably be tied to the house for the next couple of months. <laughs> but, um, but I, I love. I love seeing what they're capable of. So it should be fun. What about you? Awesome. Um, I want to try and try to ho plan the host dog trainers out here where awesome. I am. Uh, I just need to figure out the cost and coordinate just like where to, where to get people, where can I rent a space that isn't going to cost me like hundreds of dollars since I don't have my own facility um, yeah. to bring trainers to host. Cause I definitely want to bring like Jay Jack, Larry Crone, Heather Beck, Chad Mack and all that. I mean, I'll everybody. I'll make a trip out of it. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then plus I don't have to pay for boarding for my dog. So perfect. Love even it. better. <laughs> uh, and then like uh, other plans, you know, uh, conference, I'm going to go to conference in San Diego this year. And uh, I don't know if you know, Noi Popo uh, with Silver yeah. School. Yep. You're going to that? yeah that's awesome it's like literally my friend made the post to be like oh the by the way this is the last one this is the last one that barb balone will ever have uh, yeah and then i was like i told my friend i was like hey so this is the last one you gotta do I it don't... no other chance yeah, and I saved up and i had i was able to pay for the whole silver school i just need to make more for this gold but i was just like and I was like, I'll do it if you do it. And that's we're like, okay, we jumped in and we're like, okay, we're scheduled for November. So that's so cool. I'll enjoy that. That'll be great. Oh, uh, it'll be fun. And apparently there's a test that you have to pass before you go to go to school. So you already know it all. <laughs> but all right, cool. So <laughs> if like um if anyone in your area or if anyone was like interested with your services or like uh yep. wanna rescue a dog per se from you, like how would they how would they reach you or how would they how would you my training website is pitstop trainingcom um and then my Instagram is Bonds and Bullies and that's kind of where I'm most active. So welcome to find me there. Cool, cool. So yeah, guys, thank you for I think honestly, I think there was just that one person. That <laughs> Other I, people I'll watch later. Yeah, I mean no, I mean that one person. I don't know if she's your friend or not, or it was if she wasn't my friend, but it was like a Robin thin. The board door or something. Me knows I'm a pro pit bull person. Yeah, like this one was just like talking about like 45 years of trainer and all that. I was just like, oh boy. Okay. Like this one, this right. one, this one does not like our interview. But anyway, <laughs> Listen, um, haters, you're not making it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, everyone, th thank, thanks for those that watch and uh, like the video. And you know, I think I have, I think I just have like try to get chad to talk and then j jack to talk and i think that'll be it but anya thank you so much awesome. for uh thank you so much time have Bye. a good rest of your sunday you too. Bye. Bye.